You are welcome to Literature Hub 247, a free online literature class. This video is about a novel titled So the Path Does Not Die, written by Pete Hollis. The novel is in the WIAC 2026 to 2030 syllabus. Earlier on this platform, we discussed the prologue as well as chapters 1 to 6 of So the Path Does Not Die. So this is chapter 7. You are welcome to the classroom. So the power does not die. Chapter 7. In the last chapter, Edna and Kizzy are now together, and Fina concords plans to avoid their wedding ceremony. Let's now continue with Chapter 7. Aman is the district manager of Be Assured, the southern company where Fina works. She is proud of her African heritage. Her name was initially La Quandista, which was coined for her by her mother, Kwanda, and father, Larista. She came about bearing a Mazinga from the story of Queen Zinga Mbadi, narrated to her by her father. He tries to let her know something about Africa. And that's why the father narrated the story. The following morning, she had just been called Amazon. On the bus ride home that day, she announced that she wanted to be called Queen Zinga. Her classmate called her the name for about two days. The claim is not from calling somebody the name given self. That is the name she gave to herself. That is not from calling her by that name. They then started calling her Aman Zinga. That's a combination of Amazon and Zynga. She loves everything African. She reads books, visits museums, participates in cultural events, and attends lectures. The refusal of her father to call her Amazinga put them apart. One of her duties is putting calls across to the customer care representatives to discuss difficult situations and find solutions. It is during such a call to Fina that she becomes acquainted with her because of her intelligence. Amma has called later and invites Fina to lunch. You know, she creates interest in Fina when she puts a, a call to her. Fina is 20 minutes late to the food courts of the local mall. She finds it difficult to identify her as different people go about in the mall. She is expected to meet with a sophisticated and elegant woman because of her intonation and polite full manners. She decides to sit at a place that will give her an unobstructed view of the food court. She then sits on a vacant chair next to two black women who are engrossed in agitated conversation. One of the women dresses in African attire Fina says she just dresses like that so that they would think she's an African. She then thinks the other woman could be a manzinga. However, she doesn't like the points raised by the women in the course of their argument. Fina decides to leave, and the women also embrace to say goodbye. Fina is at a, is at a crossroad on what to do as the woman she thinks is a man prepares to leave. To her surprise, the woman who dressed in African attire faced Fina and introduced herself as Amma. She tenders her apology for not seeing Fina earlier. That's how they become friends quicker than they think. They have dinner together in Fina's one bedroom apartment. They exchange place entries, and Fina is about to tell her about her mother and sister when she receives a phone call that her mother is dead. Isa, her sister, says the doctor said the woman probably died of a heart attack. She is to be buried the second day, according to the Islamic rites. Two weeks later, she sends $1,000 to Isa for her rent and to pay off her mother's debt. In response to Amma's questions, she says it is the tradition of the Muslims to bury their dead immediately. 
while other activities are slated for the Sarah, quote unquote, program 40 days after the burial. That is, a program is organized 40 days after the, the person is buried. It's at, after that time, they will now have a uh, series of uh, events for the dead person. So that program is called Sarah. Aman promises to keep Fina's job for her if she travels. She also shows her interest in following her and says it will be a great opportunity for her to visit Africa. Fina responds to Amma's gestures that she will not be able to come back if she travels. Amma feels for the two of them. Fina will not come back and she can't visit Africa as she wishes. That is uh, Amma. You know, she's interested in visiting Africa. But since Fina will not be able to come back if she travels, so she also will not be able to travel to Africa. She insists on finding a solution. Funa then tells her to find her a BMW, which means a black man walking. Aman says jokingly that she also needs one for herself. Fina and Aman visit different places and attend various programs to find a man that suits Fina, but Fina does not find a match. Unexpectedly, at the funeral of Aman's grandmother, Big Mama, she meets Jema, Aman's relative. Jema is a cute businessman and an entrepreneur. Fina sticks to Jema immediately. Amma regrets the decision to introduce Fina to Jema. The relationship results in public disagreement, phone abuse, and fighting. Despite all this, Fina gets married to him, even when it is revealed by Shantia that Jema is a drug and woman abuser. It does on Fina after the marriage, all that is said about Jema. He disappears from home for a couple of nights, days, and later months. Even when at home, he is high on drugs and forces Fina to take drugs. If she refuses, it results in punching and beating. Fina cannot leave him at that stage because of the green card she is after. She pays for Jema's drug rehab programs, encouraging him to attend churches and counseling sessions. She lies to Amman and the people about bruises on her face to cover her shame. That is, bruises she maybe after Jema beat her. So she now lies to the people that uh, it's another thing, just to cover her shame. Two weeks before the final interview for the green card, Jema is nowhere to be found. Fena and Amma find him on the heave of the interview in a local crack house and they take him home. On the morning of the interview, Fena makes sure that Jema is brought to a level of mental alertness to perform optimally for the interview. Jema threatens not to go for the interview unless Fena gives him $500. Fena promises to give him after the interview. Jema then kneels and declares his love for Fena. He says it's bad deals and tricks with friends that ruin him financially, and that is why he takes drugs. He promises to be a changed man. Fina responds that they will talk about it after the interview. Before they leave for the interview, Fina goes to the kitchen and puts a meat cleaver into her handbag. Gemma is calm when they get to the immigration office. She holds him with one hand, and the other hand is in her handbag. That is Fina. She tells him that they have, they have come for a serious business and if he messes up, she will kill him. He then goes the meat cleaver in front of him. Jema, who is frightened, says, there is no fucking up. The interview was successful, but while in the car, Jema grabbed the meat cleaver from Fina's handbag. He forces her to take out the money in her bank account and hands it over to him. When he gets the money, he throws the meat cleaver into the back seat and jumps out of the car. He disappears to come around to him the following morning. He climbs the bed and forces Fina into a frantic sexual relationship. After she escapes from his grip, she packs her bags and runs to Amma. Jemma disappears from Fina's life and she gets a court order divorce decree. 
It takes some months before Fina and Ama discuss men. Ama tells Fina one day in the office that she will follow him to a program on an African names that night. She says some BMW will be in attendance. On their way home after attending the program, Aman tells Fina that Bayo is an intelligent speaker. She quotes his description of names, that is, names do have mystical power, quote unquote. That is quoted from the Bayo's uh, speech. Aman has followed him to his car to collect his business card. When Fina went to the bathroom, Aman ignores Fina's comment that Bayo is too young for her. She continues explaining the importance of names. She analyzes the meaning of her name to Fina. She is however surprised about Fina's knowledge about African culture. Ama is now dating by your Karunwi, the speaker at the lecture on Yoruba names. He is a doctoral student in mechanical engineering. The relationship develops quickly and Fina is always invited to join them when they are going for dinners at restaurants. Fina later decides to allow them some space and only follows them to defend that involve many people. She now devotes her time to fulfilling her American dream. She set aside her associate degree in business management and works tirelessly at Be Assured and as a telemarketer selling different products. That is Fina. She's able to buy a new car and put a down payment on the townhouse. The people and our visitors comment about our sophisticated decor. Fena is happy about the development and a new lease of life. She has a new card, a townhouse, which is an investment, and a car. Our mind at times go back to our grandmother's injunction, never to cut the rope. That is Baramosu injunction. Also to our father's desecration of the Fafi and to Isa, who nearly finished her secondary education. The thought leads to a resolution to go home and set up a business for Isa with a large sum of money. She feels that she can only realize it by any more money. She then decides to go job hunting. As she prepares to take a shower before going out for job hunting, a man comes over and invites her to a party. So, this is chapter 7 of So the Part does not die. If you are just joining this platform, try and click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you will be part of this class and you are going to be notified whenever any video is produced. Like this video, you are free to share it on any social media platform. Introduce your friends and colleagues to this program, to this platform. If you have any question or comment, Send it to the comment section and it will be attended to. Teachers in the house, let's introduce our students to this platform. Parents also, introduce your children to this platform. Let's meet in the next chapter. Thanks and God bless.